Hey you all, I hope your day is going great. In this video we will cover PyTest fixtures. And I think that the best way to explain them to you guys is to just start using them. And basically what they are is just an alternative to what we're doing right here with this setup class. And fixtures are used to basically just define a precondition for our functions to run. And as you can see, in this case we are using the product as a precondition and this request factory. And we can just restructure this tests so it uses fixtures instead of this setup class. And first of all I want to revert these two functions back to their normal state without the setup class so I'm just going to take this request factory instantiation and put it right here. And then there was this mixer.blend. I'm just going to put it at the top and get rid of this one. And copy paste it down here as well. And with this one as well. And now I'm just going to get rid of the self argument and get, of, get rid of the entire class. Okay, now we still have the same problem as before where we are basically instantiating the request factory object twice and this mix of blend twice. And for now I'm just going to do it with, with the request factory but you could also apply it to this, you know, instantiation of the, of the product. So let's just create our fixture. And for this one, I'm just going to create a function and we are going to call it factory. Doesn't have any arguments. And this one is just simply going to return a new request factory object. And now we have to mark it as a pytest fixture using a decorator called pytest.fixture. So now we can get rid of this request factory. And instead of this, we are just going to use the name of this fixture, which is factory, and down here as well. And what we now have to do is pass it all of the fixtures as arguments. So in this case we only have factory, and let's just go back to the command line and run pytest. And we'll see that the database access not allowed. Use the Django DB mark or the DB which is a fixture, so we can implement that, as that one as well. So instead of only factory, I'm just going to append db. And yeah, you see that it works. And now we might as well do the same with this mix.blend. So let's just create a fixture called product. And here I'm going to return. I'm just going to copy paste it real quick. And then mark it as a fixture as well. And this one then needs a product. But of course this one, you know, needs database access so I'm just going to pass it DB as well. But now that we have it here we don't need to pass it here. So just get rid of that one. And this line is needed anymore because we are passing it through the fixture. And you see that it works. So basically what is happening is by passing it as a fixture, we go to the fixture argument and return a request factory and this one is then going to be named factory and then we can simply use it with the name factory in a function. And the same is happening with the product. So I think that is quite understandable. So now let's go into the models and I'm just going to do the same as well and show you a couple more concepts which you can or a couple more tools which you can use with fixtures. So let's also get rid of this entire class and the self argument. Now you see one problem and this one is that we are basically using the same line only with one argument change. And we can handle this with pytest using pytest fixture parameters. So again, create a product, mark it as a fixture, fixture, and we can now return a mixer.blend product so product, and set the quantity equal to request dot param, sensible parameter, and now we have to actually take request as an argument and also the database. 
So we can get rid of this line. So now we need to pass it, of course, the fixture, which is product. And now comes the quite tedious part. You know, with this example, it might not be the best because the line we now have to use as a decorator is almost as long as the fixture itself. But you know, if your fixture is longer, then it might be well worth it. So just use the fixture called pytest.mark. Param parameterize and then we have to pass the name of the fixture we want to parameterize which is product and now pass in an array and this time I'm just going to use one because you know test product is in stock is of course true if the quantity is equal to one and then we also need to pass the parameter of indirect and set that equal to true you just copy this line over here and set it equal to zero. Now we can run PyTest and you will see that we are fine. And now I want to actually go back into the test views and I still have a problem with this approach. And to view this problem, I'm just going to assert false so we can make sure that this test fails at the end. And here again, assert false. And let's just take this function and print out factory instantiated. Instantiated. And let's run it again. And you see that we get it twice. One here and one here. And this is because for every single one of the functions where we pass it as a fixture, it gets instantiated, you know, separately. So we are really not gaining any benefit from this speedwise. And the argument we can pass to omit this behavior is the scope and set that equal to module. And if we rerun our test again, you will see factory instantiated only once. And this really saves us from instantiating the same object a hundred times, possibly if we have multiple tests. And now we can simply get rid of these assert false lines. And you see that it still works how it's supposed to work. I hope you enjoyed this part. Make sure to leave a like if you did and comment down below what you want to see in the future. I'm going to create a series where I'm going to be building a full application from start to finish. So just comment down below which application you want to see. And yeah, stay tuned. Cheers.